Hi, in today's lesson we're taking a look at the importance of bearing fruit. To kick things off, we'll start with looking at the danger of not bearing any fruit at all. Let's take a look at John chapter 15 and verses 1 and 2. Jesus says that I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Jesus issues a clear and critical statement. If we don't bear fruit, we'll be cut off from the vine. We will be removed from the family of God, lose our place in that great and good kingdom. But if we do bear fruit, there is hope. We'll be pruned. We'll be able to bear even more fruit, able to grow and mature, to increase. It is important that we are bearing fruit, that we are growing stronger, that we are maturing, that we can't, we, we can't remain stagnant. We are changing. Either we are getting weaker or we are growing stronger. The result of our actions, of our works, of our fruit, it affects our spiritual well-being, our spiritual destination. We need to be bearing fruit. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 3, verses 7 through 10. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into fire. Trees without fruit will be cut down, will be thrown away, cast into fire. More than just having a lack of fruit, it is a spiritual problem to be lacking in good fruit. It is not enough to just be gaining some sort of results, something, some form of fruit, some kind of change. It needs to be the proper change, the proper fruit, acceptable fruit. There is right and wrong fruit, good and bad. We'll start by taking a look at the bad fruit, the fruit that we want to avoid producing, starting with Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 through 37. Jesus says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you be being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Again, there are good and bad fruits, good and bad trees, fruits that are acceptable and those that are not. The tree is known by its fruit. You and I are known by our works, by what we produce, by our fruit, by our actions. It ultimately doesn't matter what we claim to be. It matters what fruit we are bearing, what actions we are taking, what results we are finding in ourselves. The fruit that we bear determines where we will end up in eternity either justified or condemned. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20, it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? <laughs> Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad fruit? excuse me, a bad tree, bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down, thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. 
We can judge or discern people by their fruits, by their works. If we encounter someone claiming to be a Christian, and yet their fruit speaks otherwise, we need to be on the lookout for that, on the watch for that, not being fooled by their disguises, by their lies. Be aware of false prophets by the results of their actions, by the fruit that they bear. Beware of those bearing bad fruit. We can see some of those fruits in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The works of the flesh, the fruits of the flesh, those are bad fruit. Examples of bad fruit like jealousies, like envy. Do we bear these fruits? Looking at what others have, not being content with what we have. Desiring or lusting after those things that we don't have. Does our heart and desires end up leading us to drunkenness and revelries, large drinking parties where anything goes? Is that the kind of fruit that we bear? How about outbursts of wrath and selfish ambitions? Are we unable to control our tempers or always thinking of ourselves? If we find these things in ourselves, these results, these fruits in our lives, we need to immediately quit bearing them, cut them out and throw them away, lest we ourselves be cut out and thrown away. We see that if we bear, if we possess bad fruit, we will be cut off, no longer able to enter the kingdom of God. But what of good fruit? We need to cut out the bad fruit, but we need to bear and hold on to the good fruit. And we can see that good fruit. Let's consider John chapter 15, verse number 5. Jesus says that I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Good and acceptable fruit is grown in Jesus Christ. We need to be growing fruit and beginning our actions from within Christ. That is, rather than focus on the fruit directly, focus on the source of the fruit the seed that will grow into that wonderful, glorious, good fruit. Focus on the good soil that it needs to be planted in. Focus on the good soil, the good foundation of Jesus Christ. He provides the nourishment. He provides the example, the truth that we need to produce good fruit, pleasing fruit. Let's also take a look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. To produce good fruit requires wisdom and spiritual understanding. As with planting a garden, we can't start from a place of ignorance. We cannot be successful without knowledge on how to prepare the garden, the ground, how to water the seeds and weed the garden. For our spiritual gardening, the same holds true. To be successful in bearing good fruit, we need to do our research. We need to study God's Word, the Holy Scriptures the Bible, and gain understanding and knowledge. And then we'll bear those good fruits, as we can find in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Good fruits are the fruits of the Spirit. When looking at bad fruits, those works of the flesh, we saw examples of things to cut out of our lives. Here we find examples of things to include in our lives, to add to them. Good fruit is having that love, that joy, being pleased and excited for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus and in loving one another. Good fruit is having faith in the Lord. Good fruit is having control over oneself. Considering the next couple verses in Galatians 5, verses 24 and 25, And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires, that is, has, has cut those out. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. To be fruitful and acceptable to God, we need to be a good tree, a good plant. We need to be not producing bad fruit, having that crucified, having that cut out, and instead be producing that good fruit. Crucify those works of the flesh and instead produce the good fruits by walking in the Spirit. And once we have that good fruit, we ought to be sharing it with others, spreading it, growing it, increasing. Consider Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. We need to work together, stir one another up, promote love and good works in each other, promote that good fruit that not only we ourselves want to have in ourselves, but that we want to see in others, especially in those near to us who we care for. We need to be considering one another, sharing our good fruit with them, allowing them to share theirs with us, working to plant the seeds of goodness in our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's also consider 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9-15. through 15. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, Uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. We are to comfort, we are to edify one another. That is, build each other up, strengthen one another. We are to recognize the good works of our fellow brothers and sisters and be peaceable with one another. Recognize the good works that are flourishing and help them to flourish and grow more. We are to be on the lookout also for bad fruits that are cropping up in one another and warning against those bad fruits, pointing them out so that we can prune them, get rid of them, and in the end, help each other to be the best selves that we can be, the most pleasing that we can be to our Father in heaven the best followers of Christ that we can be, giving us that best home in heaven. Pursue what is good for ourselves, but also pursue what is good for others. We want to be producing good fruit, but we also want to be desiring everyone else to be producing good fruit as well. In order to be able to enter the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, we must ensure that we are producing fruit. But it needs to be the right kind of fruit. It won't just suffice for any old fruit. We need to be ensuring that we are not producing bad fruit, that we are cutting those things out of our lives and instead producing good fruit, fruits of the Spirit, 
that are pleasing to our Father in heaven, not those fruits of the flesh. We need those wholesome fruits of the Spirit, and when we are finding ourselves producing them, we need to be looking to one another, helping others to also be producing good fruit, sharing our good fruit with one another. The type of fruit that we bear is eternally important. Whether we are cut away from the vine because we are bearing bad fruit and cast into that fire, or pruned to grow even more because we are producing good fruit. Are you bearing fruit? Any of it? And if so, what kind of fruit are you bearing? 